Hi everyone, Natasha here with a project share using the Halloween Jars die set. Let's get started. Alright, so to begin, I have already die cut out the jar as well as the witch's hat and the pieces to adorn that. And I will also be using the jack-o'-lantern face for this project. So throughout this project, I will be using my tri-blend markers as well as some Tim Holtz Distress Oxides. For the small buckle, I use the Citrus Blend Tri-Blend Marker in the darkest shade just to add some colors to that. And I will also mention that I did die cut these out and have adhesive already on the back of my die cuts for easy adherence. So next up, we will be using the Ripe Persimmon Distress Oxide and I will be adding a little bit of ink to the buckle as well as the band that goes around the hat. I will make sure I add a little bit more ink or concentrate the ink along the edges of these images just so they are darker and have a bit of gradient. I will also mention that I do not ink blend this fast. I did speed up this bit of the video so you don't have to sit through me slowly ink blending. Next I grabbed the tan blend tri-blend marker just to add a bit of variation in color and some shadowing along that band. You will see me go back and add even more shadowing once I assemble the hat but I tried to add shadowing as I went. So for the main part of the hat I used the picked raspberry distress oxide ink which is one of my favorites. Um, I am going to again be trying to concentrate the ink in some areas just to add a variation of color along this hat. To finish up my witch's hat, I am just going to add more shading, as I mentioned before, using my tri-blend markers. The pink shade that I'm using is the bright pink blend of those markers, and I'm just using the lightest shade. Once I have completed that, you'll see me flip over my paper to have a cleaner surface to work on and I will start assembling this witch's hat. As well as using a white jelly roll pen to add some highlights in different areas and there we have that. Now that my hat is complete, I take my Citrus Blend Tri Blend Marker and I add some color to the eyes, nose, and mouth of the jack-o'-lantern die cuts that I cut out. I begin with my lightest shade and then I go in with the medium shade and then add a bit of an outline using my darker shade. Moving on to my jar, I decided to have a little bit of fun and I grabbed my Pig Raspberry Distress Oxide Spray and I did a little bit of a spray onto the jar trying to focus more on one side of the jar and then I pressed the nozzle again to kind of let the ink pool and decided to do larger drips with that ink. So I hit that with my heat gun to set it and now we are going to move on to assembling our jar. So now that we are ready to assemble the jar, I completely forgot that I needed those two smaller layers to accent the top of the jar. So, so I hit those with the leftover ink on my ink blending brush in that pink raspberry shade and I added those on. 
you will see that I'm able to just remove them from the backer paper and stick them down because again I did add double sided adhesive to my paper before I die cut out my pieces. Next you will see me rearranging everything and just laying it out to make sure I like how it looks and then I'm just going to put everything in place. Of course you can see me struggling removing the back of paper from <laughs> some of these pieces but it definitely was nice to have the control of just being able to remove the backer and place those pieces down. Alright, so you'll see me finishing up my jar here. I have not adhered the hat just yet. Before I do, I am going to grab my citrus blend marker again and I'm going to add a little bit more color to these eyes. They don't have enough variation of color for me and I want them to pop a little bit more. So I'm using that darker shade just to go in and add some shading along the edges of all of those die cut pieces and then I go back in and try to just blend it all out. Now I'm going to grab my jelly roll and I'm going to add some highlights to my eyes. Again I am trying to give some definition and variation so these pieces don't all get lost and everything seems so flat and one dimensional. I then move on to adding my hat to the top of my jar. I just remove the backer paper and place the hat down but then you'll see me add the backer paper back on because I'm not ready to adhere the whole jar to my car panel. So I am trying to simply preserve as much of the adhesive as I can. So you'll see me finishing up the jar here. And now you see our fully assembled little jar. Moving on to my background of the card panel. I am using some carved pumpkin distress oxide spray and I'm just going to lightly spray that across the card panel. Once I'm satisfied with how my sprays look, I just grab my heat tool and hit that to set all of my ink into place. Now you can see my sprayed background there on the left, but my jar is still missing something. So I grab the plate that has all the pieces to build the cat face and accessories and I die cut some black cardstock to create some eyelashes. I just cut down the pieces that would be whiskers and kind of cut them to round the uh, point off and then I added them to the corners of each of the jack-o'-lantern eyes using some glue. It was pretty simple to do. My fingers are kind of in the way. But I just added some glue along the little edge that I cut so the eyelashes still have some space to kind of flutter. And I just adhered them to my eyes. I think that was the perfect addition to give this little jar more personality. I then grabbed one of my gray tri-blend markers and I used the lightest shade to kind of add a bit of shadowing behind the eyes because they still did not pop enough for me. So I just went in and added a little bit of shadowing to make the eyes pop and get your attention a bit more. So that is how I decided to finish up this little jar. Never be afraid to look at the dies and use pieces in ways that they aren't meant to be used. It just stretches what you have. Here you'll see me adding on a panel of foam that I die cut. I have noticed that wet adhesive is somewhat harder to work with when using the foam. It tends to slip inside a little bit more than I'd like. So I just added double sided adhesive to both sides of my foam. And then I went in and added some foam tape to the back of the witch's hat because I want this entire jar to pop up off of my card front. The final card assembly is rather simple once your jar is complete. I'm just adding glue to that panel that I created using my oxide spray and I'm going to adhere that to some patterned cardstock that I cut out. Um, I did go back in and I just randomly stamped this sprayed panel just to add a little bit more interest. I thought it needed a little something and I'm going to add my jar to the center. 
So here is my completed card. Let me know what you think. I did add a sentiment to the bottom as well as a few clay stars all around the front panel. I even die cut out the trick or treat from this die set and I added it into the inside. So there we have it guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.